the other two things that I thought, um, number one, and I've said this before, but basically this whole kind of sacred name idea, whether it's with Yeshua or whether it's with yod heh vav Hey or whatever it is, um, the idea, <clears throat> the idea that, that uh, you know, if you're saying it wrong, you're uh, cursing his name and you have to say it right for him to hear your prayers or those kind of things. Um, this, this goes back very far, uh, you know, in the mystical and the magical uh, Gnostic texts. Once again, we come back to the Gnostics. They, they believed that if you said the name uh, in a certain way, or if you rearrange letters in the name a certain way, um, you could curse people or you could bless people if you said something, you know, said the name properly. This gets, we've talked about the Baal Shems in the, in, uh, you know, the Middle Ages and whatnot and, and beyond. And, uh, you know, they were doing the same thing. If you were sick in a village somewhere, you'd call your local Jewish Baal Shem. They would come and they would uh, rearrange the tetragrammaton and uh, say it, you know, say things differently, and that would be to try to heal you. This, all in all, is magic. It's uh, it's it's idolatry, and I know that Gary would protest in that. You know, I don't know who Gary is, but I I know that uh, from the tone of what he's what he said, he would certainly protest to the idea that what he's uh, dabbling in is is magic and or idolatry. But the idea that you can control God by um, by using his name proper, properly or improperly is that's what idolatry is, is the idolaters believe that they could control the gods. Uh, we don't control God. That's not how it works. Um, and a person's heart is what matters. We, we hear all the time about circumcised heart and a circumcised heart is what matters, not the way that you're going to pronounce something. Right. Um, and then finally, the last thing I thought about this, then I'll throw it over to you, Rob, to be honest with you, when I read, uh, his, his comments and I started thinking about maybe who, who this person may be and, and where he's at, I, not just where he's at, you know, in his studies, uh, and you know, we, we're all growing, all of us are, are growing in our studies, but, um, even where he's at, uh, geographically and, uh, you know, as you know, I started wondering, is this person in a city? Is this person, you know, part of a community or, and then I thought, okay, well, what would it be like to be in a community with a person who, uh, basically thought every time you said Yeshua or you, you know, you said Yahweh or something like that, you were cursing, uh, God. Well, then I honestly started to feel like it would be like uh, taking Gary's view, uh, whoever this person is, taking this kind of view would be extremely isolating, even if you were in a large city. And the reason why is because no matter what believer you're talking to, you're essentially telling them that they're cursing God and that they're wrong. It's like the cage stage on steroids, right? The Calvinist. Except it's not for, except it's not even anchored. It's anchored in. In falsehood, right. In falsehood, yeah. yeah uh, a couple other points here. Is it still up for people? Can people still see it? Uh, or, I can. I, let me bring oh. it back up. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, he says Yeshua with the, with the A at the end. And that's that. Even if you even if we were to accept that there's an acronym here, it wouldn't have the it that would be Yeshu because it's it's Yemach Shemo V'Zechrono. May his, may his name and memory be blotted out. So it doesn't actually have the name, but there's no I. There would there's no I in the acronym. So so the person's already uninformed here. Um, but to the name Yahusha, that is not a Hebrew name, right? Um, and it's actually is Yeshua, and um, you know we know that from Tanakh. So assuming if this person accepts the Tanakh. Um, in Hebrew and Aramaic, then we could demonstrate from him, you know, for example, uh, Yehoshua, Joshua, then we call Joshua bin Nun, son of Nun, is referred to in the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah, as Yeshua, right? Right. And we also have uh, Yehoshua, uh, who is the uh, son of Yehotzadak, right? So uh, Yehoshua ben Yehotzadak in Zechariah is referred to in Ezra as Yeshua bar Yotzadak. Right. Yeshua bar Yotzadak. Clearly, that's an Aramaic version of the same name. So Yeshua and Yehoshua uh, are both perfectly acceptable names. Um, Yeshua is not what this guy says it out to. There is no person in all of Scripture called Yehusha. Um, 
Uh, so there's a there's a sadly there's some illiteracy, biblical illiteracy here. And this this is a person who has zeal, and I would just suggest that these this is a flag of someone who got steered in the wrong direction at some point. They had right. zeal to learn, and they had sadly they had bad teachers. Don't miss any clips from Messiah Matters by clicking the subscribe button. Also, give this video a thumbs up and share it so other people can see it too.